sing one, two, one, two. Your mornings are about to get a whole lot of messy. Stop calling me that, <laughs> you heifer. <laughs> <laughs> Can we say that on air? You guys are wild. Wake your ass up. With Vaughn, Chap, and Justice. Ow. This is Morning Commute. Bitch! Mm-hmm. Jesus, Chap. <laughs> I just want to put out there, Chap just led us in prayer two minutes ago. Jesus. <laughs> I don't just know, like, man. I thought I bottled up energy from last week. Just like that, we are back from the dead. It's the Morning Commute Podcast, live from, from the center of attention. Yeah, baby! We back. Woo. We back. Von I'm, Leak, I'm ready. Justin Chapman and Justice Greg. How are we, fellas? It's popping, y'all. Good morning. I'm happy to be in the presence of two hardworking black kings like myself, mm-hmm. and I'm ready to pod. Today. Well, you and I are black and Puerto Rican. We're still black. You didn't. You, you didn't have to. De- <laughs> he had to black. hit you with the the twenty one and me. <laughs> I want us to get double credit. Is what I was saying. I want us to get double credit w- for the black people that work hard and the Puerto Rican people that work hard. Absolutely, bro. Absolutely. Honestly, but I, I, black I, is to include chap. You know, what I mean, we we gotta include chap in this. You know, what I mean, who said I'm not Puerto Rican? Who said I don't got no? I got yeah. no little fifteen percent of me. You yeah. barely black. Didn't you confuse Jollof rice for like jambalaya whoa, whoa, rice whoa, or something? Whoa, 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 whoa. Step back, all right? Y'all know what I meant. We we ain't gonna hold this. Y'all know what I meant. From what, what, and what also that you I said, I said, Joe. We were talking about Haitian foods, mm-hmm. and I said jollof rice, but jollof rice is is Nigerian food. Mm-hmm. But I've I've talked to my 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 peoples and and counseled with them and they corrected me so now I'm I'm forgiven so don't we were also on. justice we were also talking about justice what does BIPOC stand for say it again BIPOC <laughs> BIPOC B B I P O C what does that stand for wait spell again B I oh my gosh you're a disgrace <laughs> right you don't know either don't B I P O C BIPOC Nigga, I do not. I, I was like, is this nigga spelling biopic? No, 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 no. <laughs> not biopic. <laughs> BIPOC, it stands for Black, Indigenous, and People of Color. You never heard that before? No, bro. And I'm not going to lie, bro. If someone is BIPOC, they're not abbreviating it like that. No, I, that's people a say thing. It, that is a thing. I've never heard that before. POC is person of color. And then when you're trying to include mul- more groups of people or whatever, they say B-I-P-O-C. Well, one day we were doing this show back in college, and me and our friend Nick asked Chap what the what B I P O C stood for, and he said Black Indigenous peas, okra, and corn. Because <laughs> he's a racist. Ass. I promise oh, you. I came out of oh, the slave food, damn. <laughs> now I'm in corporate America, and I know what it means. I did my training. <laughs> so. You did your diversity training? Yes, I did my diversity training. The EOE. Now I know. I know. Yo, Haitian, Haitian food is fire, though. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm I'm Haitian by association. If you guys didn't know, two percent Haitian. Just two percent. Yeah, like two percent Haitian. Two percent Haitian. Got you. It's and what's the percentage of Peruvian? It. So it's it's fifty percent black. Then it's a, probably like a solid mm, like twenty percent Puerto Rican, twenty percent Peruvian. Which would make up what that's 40. Yeah, and then that last 10%, we'll say it's Haitian. Fuck it. You Haitian. Definitely, you're Haitian. definitely 50% black. Your dad's name is Randall. Not Randall, Rodney. Rod, Rod yeah, that's even that's even blacker. Shit. And then, <laughs> you might be a hundred percent black. <laughs> God. That is a black name. Rodney. Who's ne- our friend Nick's dad's name is Randall? Anyway, you're not here to listen to us talk about our dads. <laughs> Although they're like they're still are, there. Although, yeah, yeah. Although, back to the point where we're black, <laughs> we all have them. Yes, uh, bro. I feel like we all, yo. I feel like collectively we share this trauma, where because I'm, I'm, I think did did y'all go to school with like that was uh, that was like pretty diverse, like no. in elementary, and middle school? No, uh, high school, yes. Middle school, no. Okay, so y'all went to like predominantly like black. Yeah, uh, I was I'm in the hood. So no, no, no. I went to predominantly white schools up until oh. high school. So Vaughn knows what I'm talking about, bro. They definitely were were letting the you don't have a dad jokes fly like crazy. <laughs> like because that I got those. <laughs> so I know you got them. 
And chap, I know damn well you got them. <laughs> nah, we, we ain't get those. We ain't get those. If you in the hood school, you ain't get those. You got worse than that. You got them in high school. High school? Nah, I guess I guess high school. Maybe you- a few, oh, but yeah. like it wasn't crazy like that. I don't know, bro. Elementary, bro. They used to let them just fly, bro. It's like it was, it was crazy. It's like in when I was in elementary and middle school, that's when I went to mainly predominant or predominantly white schools. My dad would come in for parent teacher conferences and I'd be like, My dad's coming. And it's like the teacher from Everybody Hates Chris. And they're like, No, really, who's coming? <laughs> <laughs> or I remember in third grade when and I've said this as a as a uh, I, I did a stand up comedy set at a comedy club and I said it as a joke, but this is something that really happened. Um, when Obama got inaugurated in office, I was maybe in second grade and people looked at me like, so how do you feel? Like as if that was, he was a member of my family or something. I hate that. That is, I feel like microaggression is crazy. I feel like I'm at a similar situation than you. I've heard, I've heard African booty scratcher. I don't know if they said that. (laughs) I was from, but African booty scratcher was a crazy one. Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy, bro. And th- th- this was from like white kids, or this is from other black kids? Nah, this is from other black kids, which is very ironic. <laughs> from his mom, actually. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> She's like get up, African booty scratcher. Let's go. Yeah, nah. From other black kids, bro. The big thing was like, oh yeah, you ashy. That, that that's that's a big one. My thing is, they be coming at you harder. You, yeah, you think you about to get it from Timmy or, or Veronica? But yeah. but Shaquana and 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 Lil Quan <laughs> is giving you all the heat. Like, come on now, like, what's up, Darius? I thought we was boys. <laughs> like, I honestly, it's because with with white kids, there's there's a little bit of fear there. There's just a little bit. They they not they don't want to say what they really want to say. Other black to other black people, they gonna let it fly, bro. Definitely they gonna let it fly. And but they, I, I don't know if y'all have noticed, but like. In black circles, and if y'all don't, let me know. It's a lot of like dark humor, and like just be going in on each other, just like him. Like you would think we hate each other, just the way we talk. But that's just like that's just the click. That's how we are. Even mm. in family, family the same way. Nah, for sure. Let me ask you a question. In school, were y'all like big on like roasting? Like were y'all like the roasters at at, at y'all lunch table? No, I don't think I've nah. ever been good at roasting. Nah. See, I was, but I feel like I had to be. I had to grow into that because I've always like I was a fat kid, so you know they were letting the fat joke. And the, <laughs> Definitely. Kid, ain't nothing funnier than a fat joke. Nothing hits harder. So I had to come correct, bro. <laughs> and I feel like that. That's what I feel like. That was good character development for me because now I'm here. You know what I mean? But what's that know. thing you wrote in your old short film? Embarrassment builds character. <laughs> Embarrassment <laughs> builds character. That, that's facts, bro. That's facts. I, I, I'm going to piggyback because I just saw something on Instagram and it was like me telling my girl that the the number one, like the skin ball fade is building character. And I was like, I said that to my girl. I'm like, definitely because I came to school yep. with the baldy and I'm talking about, bam, yeah. slap the back of my head. He's getting it. He's getting it. I don't care. I don't know what it was, bro. Like, yeah, I want this. I want this. I want a mohawk. Nope. Cut it down. Exactly. Give, give him a one. My pop is a one and a half. Bro, like, I used to be like, one A, please. At least. Bro. <laughs> a little bit. Something. Wait, did y'all get a like choice of like y'all haircut? Like, what age <sighs> did your father let you choose? High school. You High school, bro. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, grown out like mid middle school. Well, Same. no, in middle school, it was I got to decide if it was a one or a one A because I didn't want it so <laughs> super duper duper short. I wanted something on the top because the big thing that people made fun of me for in school was how big my head is, which is maybe why later in life I decided to grow my hair out. I've had my hair grown out since high school. It's probably, um, I, yeah, I think that is why. And but like my head was so like just it still is, but it's just harder to tell now. So big and just round. Swole, swole. Yes, that's a great, a great <laughs> adjective. My head was so swole. And so I didn't want it to be so low that it looked like I had the one. And then eventually I, you know, I got a I went through the mohawk phase. I went through the just growing. You had a mohawk phase. Yeah, no. I will send you pictures. The no, but Mo- mohawk had a chokehold on the black community back then. For, For sure. sure. For sure, bro. Oh my god, a mohawk was so cringe. Oh my gosh. It, it had its time though. It had its time. But I, I like how I like how your pops like made it seem like you had a choice. 
the one with one A. He's like, yo, you want red or you want dark red? <laughs> <laughs> That's a fact. <laughs> And then I, when I was in high school, I finally got the nerve to be like, look, I'm going into high school now, Pop. Yeah, I, I want to make some choices for myself. And that's when right. I started growing this out. And I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And you've, Justice, and you've known me longer than Chap, so you've seen my hair, like, Afro-type long. It's always been this style, but, like, much longer than it is now, so. Would you ever change it up? Uh, I want to. I talk to Justice about this all the time. Justice always inspires me because I love Justice's curls. I say that to him quite often. Um, and then I get jealous just how his hair grows and then he gets a man bun and it just looks better on him than me because one, I think my, not I think my head is big and my forehead is big. So I don't think I could pull off the man bun either, but I talk to Alyssa all the time about growing my hair back out and she's not a fan. My girlfriend. I get that. Mm. So she likes it like shorter. She likes it exactly the length it is. And for the past, like however many years I've kept it about this length, maybe gone a little shorter, maybe gone a little like longer but it's a bit about this length for the duration of the time you guys have known me have you ever had like braids or anything i have yeah i will tell you i when i grew uh i was a senior in high school i wanted to my hair was so long i wanted to put it in braids and i did do a man bun for maybe a month on and off my dad thought i looked so gay and he oh, wow. said he said i will not let you live in my house with a man bun when you turn 18 you could do whatever you want with that hair but you're not going to live in my house with a man bun. Bro, but you know what? Our folks, bro, it was a different time back then, man. De definitely different time. It was different. I like I, I, I argue with my dad, bro. He, he tried to say that this generation soft and all that. I'm like, your generation was just like, y'all just thugs, man. Like, <laughs> that's, that's crazy. This is, that's what, that's just, this is what it is. Like, just, if you just hear, like, the stories that y'all, that y'all pops, t like, tells you about when he was younger, it was just so crazy times, bro. It, Crazy times. I don't know, cause I be talking to my dad, and I feel like I gotta take everything with a grain of salt, because he just be talking, and it don't sound like. Look at your parent now, and then hear the stories. The person I'm looking at right now don't equate with the person in these stories. Right. right? I mean, just, that work. is growth. That's growth. <laughs> that, that is what's supposed to happen. But like, even it, it even comes down to like the music they listen to. Like, they, they, I feel like they love to say that like music rap now is trash, but like. The, the music that my pop listened to, like, bro, like, you had the girls around, you playing Jada Kiss? That sounds <laughs> terrifying, bro. No, my pop, and if you're listening right now, I want you to think of one thing that you just cannot see your parent doing, whether it's your mom, your dad, or maybe an uncle or uh, an aunt, even though I feel like aunts and uncles are a bit more believable because they're more your friends than your parent. My dad, I'm not saying my dad is soft now. I would never say that. But, like, my dad tells me all the time he used to have to he would get like jumped walking home from school oh, and he would have to fight people or like anytime somebody my, my dad has three younger sisters he's the oldest of five anytime somebody would mess with or try to talk to one of my aunts he would like beat up dudes at a school or he my dad got banned from a school because he went and threatened somebody at my aunt's school when they was messing with him i just don't see my dad as that thug now man me, our dads are around the same type of time and i'm not gonna lie to you bro <laughs> And that's, that's not me trying to, the boys the hood. That's not me. That's, that's, that's not me. Is, that's what, you know what, my, our dads either would have been real cool or they would have fought. That, I'm that, not trying to test my dad's gangster. Like, I'm not saying it's not there. I just, he just seems mad chill now, is what I'm saying. He's a reformed gangster, maybe is what he yep, is. Yep. That's what it is, bro. Jeez. I, as you should with age. I feel like if you're a gangster at 45, put it up, grandpa. It's enough. Yes. Max. My pop literally turns 40. Tomorrow's my dad's birthday, actually. Shit. Hey, happy birthday, pops. Happy early Word. birthday. Word. All right, baby. Let's get into it. We took a week off. Um, Much needed. Because, because yes, yeah, very much needed. Sorry for no warning. Yeah. To be honest, me and Chap didn't get a warning. Yeah. Not, it, it, it's it was, all it's, Justice's fault. That's my bad, y'all. Somebody, right. somebody sent me a text and said, your boy out here in the streets. That I, I kid you not. He mm -hmm. said, your boy out in the streets, you need to get him. And I'm like, damn, he, he just bailed on us. This just makes so much sense. And it's crazy that you came up here now with the, the fitted on. The New York, you've been doing some dirty work. I, I can just tell. The blue light, the fitted on, like the camera was all close when he first came in. He, yes, it was. Some crazy work. When we first logged on this call, Justice had that camera zoomed in hella. I'm telling you, man. What you, what you think was going on with that camera? We know what was going on. You, you don't gotta explain for the for the listeners. We know what's going on. 
hey, look, I cannot confirm nor deny these allegations, but I apologize to all the fans out there. All I gotta say is super villain home videos coming out soon. That's home all I gotta videos. Say. <laughs> I'm telling That's you, man. <laughs> ain't you gonna be gone next week? You going on a trip, ain't you? Yeah. What the hell are we supposed to do? He traveling with it too. That's yeah. crazy. <laughs> this is crazy, bro. Who, who is your connect? He's all taking I his ass on the road. <laughs> <laughs> I need y'all to hold the fort down. I right? I gotta go ahead with some business. I'll leave it. I'm the leaving. traveling circus, this guy. Yo. Oh shit. Y'all stay, stay safe out there. Stay safe. I will. I will. Wrap up. Yeah. I will. Jeez. <laughs> Justice gonna put the cum in more than cum you. Jesus. That was nasty. Yo. <laughs> that was nasty, bro. <laughs> so nasty. Morning commute, <laughs> morning commute podcast, there baby. We back. <laughs> we back, baby. Vont League, Justin Chapman, and Justice Greg. Back for another week of righteousness and ratchetness. I think I think that's it right there. Let's get to the Black Twitter report. From the latest rap feeds to the hottest debates, and even the messiest celebrity scandals in between, it's the Black Twitter report on morning commute. So we're recording this on Thursday, which means yesterday is when uh, One Direction member Liam Payne passed away. And I've been, it's so weird being in radio and podcasting when big figures like this pass away. Like, Justice, you and I were on the air when DMX passed. Um, we were on the air when uh, Donald Trump or COVID. got COVID. Yeah, when he got COVID. And I just think about, like, how to talk about some of these things. And I think the closest thing I can think about is, you know, the pain that so many people feel the pain that's involved with death and just thing like tragedies in general. Right. Because there's pain from us as fans or followers or supporters. There's pain from actual friends and, and family of Liam Payne. You can't imagine what his family or his girlfriend or his son who is like seven years old might be going through. And then when it's, I guess somebody that's suffering from mental health issues or suffering from drugs and alcoholism, like Liam Payne, the pain that he himself might be going through that have caused this. And so, first of all, we want to, you know, send our condolences to Liam's family and friends and the rest of One Direction and everybody that's, you know, uh, suffering from this. And I, I hate the amount of misinformation that goes around when things like this happen. Another, I remember Robin Williams was like another example that we kind of saw of this because he was somebody else suffering from, uh, from depression and I, I don't know about mental health issues particularly but just the misinformation and people are just like oh he probably like before it was confirmed that he might have actually felt like jumped from the balcony there were people like oh he probably did this to himself oh it's because he was drunk like there was just so many rumors and people drawing their own conclusions and stuff and like you don't know you don't know and none of us we've Liam has even said in interviews that he's really good at hiding his pain which sucks it really does. And not to make this conversation all about mental health, but I do think there's something to be said there that we need to take mental health more seriously. I know that older generations and maybe even some of us as Gen Z look at it like it's an excuse to get out of doing things like, oh, my mental health is not right. I can't go into work today. Or, you know, some schools are starting to take it more seriously. Like our me and chap senior year of college, they started giving us two days of school off to get your mental health right. And I think that's great. That's a great step. But there needs to be more things in place to just check on people. But like I said, with Liam, it sucks because not only are people good at hiding it, they admit, yeah, I'm hiding my depression. I'm hiding my mental health issues. And we kind of don't know. I don't know what the the solve is for that. I'm I'm going to disagree with you, Vaughn. I, th I think we need to talk about this every day, 365 days of the year, this is such a serious problem that we're not, I, th I think it's, it's becoming, uh, you know, more awareness around it. Is it action being done here and there? Uh, but it's, again, this is an unfortunate situation that um, this is one of many that the many we don't hear about. Um, I'm, I was never a one directioner like that, but um, you know, I was always hoping they were okay in their like solo careers and stuff like that. Um I've never been a big fan of like the career of, of bands and stuff. Cause I just know once that breakup is done, it'd be some crazy stuff going on. 
Um, but again, like you said, uh, condolences to his family. I didn't know he had a, a, a child, so condolences to them. And I hope, I don't know, I hope they, they find some comfort. But yeah, let's keep this conversation going. Uh, it, it needs to be some talk about this. And and again, right, like you said, Vaughn, the misinformation is crazy. Twitter was just on fire today with, with all the, the conspiracies. And this got posted at this time before this is announced. At the end of the day, it does low key what I hate about social media. But at the end of the day, somebody just lost a father, somebody just lost a brother, a friend. Please respect that. That's that's all I gotta say at the end of the day. No, yeah, I agree with you. First of all, I want to say rest in peace. Um, I know we all grew up in a time where we were we were kids when One Direction first popped in the scene. And I'm sure, like me, y'all weren't messing with One Direction. It was it was for it was all the girls that like One Direction, you know what I mean? Of but, course. Um, at the end of the day, they are a legendary group, and <clears throat> I agree with you. I think um, we need to take mental health more serious, especially us as men. I feel like are more inclined to hide our feelings and just, you know, quote unquote, thug it out. I yeah. think we're just. I I think I feel like it's 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 that that's just how we're wired. It's in our nature to do that. And I feel like even like when we're not even trying to do that, we tend to do that sometimes. Um, I know I'm guilty of that where, you know, sometimes if I'm dealing with something, I just want to be left alone. 100%. But uh, yeah, it's important to talk to somebody. And it's also important to check on your friends, man, because you never know what's going on. Um, also, one thing I said, you mentioned that uh, a bunch of conspiracy theories have been flying on Twitter and stuff like that. Also, a lot of jokes have been flying on Twitter, which I find crazy. Um, whether or not how you feel about Liam, uh, what allegations he's facing or whatever, the man just died, bro. Like at least give it a couple days. Like he died yesterday and the jokes have just been flying. And I think, I don't know, man, I feel like, I don't know if we're just all desensitized to death or suicide, but we are, we are. Yeah. That, that might be part of it, but people need to chill out, man. People need to chill out. Uh, rest in peace and prayers to his family. I think that's part of the problem is that even when people are alive, they don't know how how uh quick death can happen and how finite it is and how that might affect somebody's mental health. Mental health because I know in the coming a lot of the articles I've read in the not coming weeks, the most recent weeks, Liam has an ex fiance. And she's been coming out saying a lot of things about him. She even wrote a book and was kind of talking about him in it. And that people were getting on him because of that. And then I I don't know what Liam had going on. Like, I know right now it's not a Harry Styles situation where he's like a pop star post One Direction or like a Zayn. You know, I don't think it's been he's been as lucky as some of the other members of One Direction. But people getting on him because of that, people inputting their opinions and two cents, that also might have played a part in it. And it sucks because he passed away in Argentina while he was on a trip to visit Nile. So he was trying to do something that seems like it was for himself, for a sense of self, for a sense of relief. And whether it was accidental or he did jump, it's just a shame that he felt the need to take his life at all. For all the listeners that are tuned in right now, please check on your friends. Please check on your family. Um, again, like we said, there might be a lot of people, me included, who just don't talk about their feelings, um, especially as men. Please reach out to somebody. Um, it doesn't hurt to talk it out sometimes. I remember telling my parents I was take, doing therapy, and like that was like the big shock to them. Like, oh my god, what's what's going on? Are you cool? Um, and again, that's just like that that old fashioned like we don't do therapy. The generation know. gap. Yeah. But um, if we talk about it more, we bring more awareness, you know, we, we start to, you know, not have it as such a taboo topic in our society anymore. Um, and I think that's what we're trying to aim. Yeah, uh, I agree. I remember that I started therapy. It was around this time last year and I was going through depression. And after a while, it I wasn't depressed, but it was something that was just comforting. It was cool to talk to somebody and get my feet and talk about my emotions. And I can honestly say as a black man who's been in therapy, it is so comforting to talk to somebody that kind of knows nothing about you because there's no judgment. Um, and there's no like, Oh, I can't tell justice this because he might tell chap. Like this is just a, a blanket person that you can talk to. 
Um, so I'm in, I'm just, I'm endorsing therapy for men, women, black, white, gay, straight, whatever your situation is, because talking about your issues definitely helps. I don't want to turn this into a therapy session, but it's just, it's, it's facts. It really is. Right. And also, uh, really quickly, um, I, I forgot to mention this, but I kind of a theme on the show is talking about, uh, child stars in the industry i wouldn't call one direction child stars exactly but when they came up they were like 16 18 they were young you know mm -hmm. what i mean so it just it's another example of how this industry really takes a toll on young people coming up so it's, it's just crazy to see but once again rest in peace and prayers up to the family <clears throat> um on to some lighter news it's weird saying lighter news Talking about Lizzo, uh, Lizzo recently. Wow. <laughs> one, one, it, it was first bought, and now you done jumped into the fold with him. Hey man, look, look, look. Let me tell you something, bro. There's two reasons why I can let the fat jokes fly. One, right? It's friendly fire. It's friendly <laughs> fire, all right. And two, after all that shit, she did her background dishes. Nah, fuck that. I'm letting them fly. I don't care. I don't care. Also, three. Oh, 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 Sam Pick. Yo, y'all are stupid. For hey, hey, I will say this. She's been looking good lately. She does look good, bro. I will say she's been looking good. Shout out to Lizzo. She's always been looking good. All right, chap. Y'all right, cannot take. I'm let you, chap, I'm gonna let, sometimes you got to let your homies cap. I'm going to let you cap. <laughs> I, I, get, I get the role what? you have to play right now. I'm going to let you cap. I'm going to let you cap. But <laughs> Lizzo, she recently had an interview. Um. She was speaking at uh, the Fortune's most powerful, uh, Fortune's most powerful women event, and she was asked during the interview. I don't know what she was there to promote or whatever, but in during the interview, she was asked about the recent allegations, and she had some interesting, you know, she had some interesting words as a response. Here's the clip. Year last year, you had um, some allegations against you of sexual harassment and creating a hostile work environment, all of which you have denied, and I want to be completely clear about that. How did you feel when that news came to light? You know, I don't want to talk about things like that. This isn't the space where we're celebrating female CEOs and powerful women. This isn't really the space to talk about the negative things that happened to us, because so much negative stuff happens to powerful women and this is not the it space. does i did and i think that's that's one of the reasons why we have to ask the question to give the powerful woman the opportunity to answer in her own words rather than just let stories circulate right online right as i agree with you i don't think this is the platform for that okay okay <laughs> hey man look nothing says i did that shit like saying no comment because if if you are truly innocent if you truly did not treat your background dancers like shit, if those allegations weren't true, you would say it. You would say it, bro. If someone accused you of doing something you didn't do, wouldn't you be clamoring to prove that you didn't do that shit? No. I should, she's guilty as fuck. I agree that that was not the space to be to talk about that stuff. Wow, nah, bro. No, no. I disagree. I, I disagree with you, bro. I disagree with you. I disagree with you. I feel like the allegations were serious, and I feel like no matter what type of interview it is, she was going to have to face that because we haven't heard from her since these allegations. She's yeah. been in and she just popped up at award shows like we just forgot. You can't you, you like th that's not how this works. Justin, you gotta understand. This is not CBS sixty minutes. This is a fortune. Uh, a fortune event with the for about the most powerful woman. They mm -hmm. don't want to hear that. That this is not no investigative journalism stuff. I understand. I, I understand. We saying. I hundred percent agree. It's been a long time, and and stuff hasn't been said. But to Vaughn's point, just, there's a time and place for everything. This just what this just wasn't one of them. It just wasn't one of them. I don't know. It seems like a cop out to me. Even if it isn't the time and place, right? I feel like I still would have said, "Hey, that shit ain't true, bro." Like, like this ain't the time, but that shit wasn't true. Straight I up. feel like it was a cop out. Um, well, no, this is what I feel. I feel like this is not the time or the place, but I feel like she should have answered it better than I don't want to talk about that. I agree, it made her seem guilty, but what I feel like she should have done was spun the block on the question. Like, well, the lawsuit that's in in motion right now, 
it's pending and you know what else is pending like my new book like i don't know what she but i, I feel like she should have been media tra- i don't know i, just I, like I feel been like that was good trained. pr right there no, was, i feel yeah. like she should have been media trained much better to spin the question because then she would have made shawty that asked the question look a little bit stupid i i i, I do i see your point there i see your point there but regardless it's a cop out bro and regardless we're not gonna forget no matter how many Grammy Oscar stages you 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 go on and present awards to, we ain't forget. You gotta you gotta face the music, bro. Like so, you could do your little Fortune 500, whatever the hell this interview was, but go do a real interview. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about the allegation. If this ain't the right, right. time, what is the right time? Matter of right. fact, come on morning commute. Come on morning commute, and we'll talk about the allegations. That's all. I said it to Lizzo. Tag Lizzo in this. Lizzo. I know her. I got a picture with her. We've we've met. Vaughn, tap in. Look, I, I don't think that Lizzo would have had an open conversation, even if she started talking. Like, even if she answered Shawty's question, they wouldn't have gone on with like whatever. Like, oh, so this is what happened. This is like th- that's not what the platform was for. So I feel like even if Lizzo answered her question the way you're saying, yep, nothing really would have been resolved. People would have still wanted more. That's why. I think she should have just spun the block on the question and been like, um, well, my background dancers, you know, I'm getting ready to go on tour. And so whether it's with these background dancers or the other new background dancers or old and just started saying enough to just jumble the question and get people to move on. It would have been like, oh, Lizzo said something. I don't know if she answered my question. I just feel like that would have been proper media training. Also, to my knowledge, the, the lawsuit's still going on, correct? So like you can't talk about certain stuff. That is a good point. In interviews, because that could be used against you in court. So I say she true. she would have slipped up and said something wrong. The lawyer about to smack her right after the interview. Like, why would you say that? Type See, stuff. that's a good point. But then I agree with Vaughn. Just say, I can't talk about that right now. The lawsuit is pending. Uh, did she basically not say that? No, she said, this ain't the right, this isn't the right time to talk. It's not. We're trying to empower, you, we're trying to empower women and you're trying to talk about all the fucked up shit that I did. Like this, this isn't the time for that. So when is the time, Lizzo? Great paraphrase. Like, what, what, like, what's the, what is the time, bro? Bro, she's busy working out in the gym. Let her be. Honestly, she really is. Salute to her. But uh, soon, you know, you have to face music. Stop running on the treadmill and come answer these questions. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, I got, I got one more for you. I want to see how y'all feel about this one. Um, so bow wow. The, the the great Bow Wow went on to uh, the podcast uh, more to the story with uh, Roxy Diaz, uh, the former host of 106 and Park. And he went on and said some very interesting stuff. They were talking about Diddy. Now, we've been talking about Diddy for the past three episodes um, and all the allegations that he's been going through. Um, but Bow Wow wanted to add his little two cents. On, he was saying that the award shows and the after parties are so different now because Diddy has been gone. And he literally said, it feels like it's a hole in the hip hop. That sounds crazy. A hole in the hip hop community right now because he's gone. Um, and that they're in a very, very mess up situation, which I think kind of just turns your head from everything that's going on all the allegations, all the stuff that's coming out, all the videos. I don't know if y'all seen some of the videos and pictures that's been being posted, but everything that's going on and focusing on the fact that there are no parties after the award show, I, I got to get y'all input on that. What a stupid thing to say. <laughs> wow. Wow. Even if you feel that way, and right now, why would you choose this time to say you missed? importantly why would you say you miss his parties of all things you miss you miss his parties what is our training. Oh, lack of media training <laughs> oh i'll shut up holy <laughs> that's crazy bro. that's like if that's like if it, this was the summer that r kelly went to prison and i was just like man we need some new back uh backyard party music where's r kelly at bro like come on I, it's probably definitely somebody who said that <laughs> Or <laughs> they need, then they, then him and ba- whoever said that about R. Kelly and Bow Wow need to go ahead. Oh my gosh. For real, bro. I'm reading this thing. It says uh allegedly Diddy's baby oil was laced with date with a date rape drug. How do you lace baby oil? What? I don't know, bro. Diddy Diddy's a super villain. Diddy's I'm the like, real super villain. 
a plaintiff identified as Jane Doe claims that baby oil found in Diddy's house was laced with uh, Rohypnol or GHB, which is a date rape drug. The October 14th filing alleges Diddy used these drugs to commit non-consensual acts of sexual violence. This is what Bow Wow is saying is missing in the community. Jesus Christ. Alleged. It's a different hole. Wow. Nah, but yeah, Diddy, he's going six feet under, man. But Bow Wow, very stupid thing to say. Very, yeah. very stupid. Uh, read the room. Read the room, my guy. I feel like this is going to sound very hypocritical, but I hate that we make p- platforms for people to speak their opinion. Shut the fuck up sometimes. Like, yeah. I, I don't want to hear everybody's opinion. That's with social media. That's a podcast. Everybody doesn't, doesn't need their opinions out there, especially when they're dumb and they don't make any sense. I'm sorry. And the people can say the same thing about us, but they do. Yeah. We're intelligent to some degree. Bro, all, well, our heads put all together. We, we're intelligent. We make up one, <laughs> one brain cell. <laughs> right. All three of us. Bro, right. that, that, that reminds me. Um, uh, this person I met at work, I was, I was talking to her and. Like, like I mentioned something about someone said on a podcast and she went on like this 10 minute rant on like about how she hates podcasts, how podcasts are like the downfall of civilization. And then she was like, anyway, so what do wow. you do? And like, now <laughs> we just spent 10 minutes shitting on podcasts. I have to tell you that I have four podcasts. <laughs> well, this is uh, real awkward. So I just told her, yeah, I, I do. I do YouTube. I, I have to leave out the podcast. Shit. Nah, you should have said podcast. <laughs> was this woman like of high, like a higher position than you? I mean, I guess not really. Like, not really though. She was, but it, it was just a funny moment. It was just, it was definitely a sitcom moment. Like that's definitely a moment where I would like look at the camera and be like, "Bruh, <laughs> real funny, bro." P- podcasts definitely have a a negative stigma though. Definitely, definitely, definitely do. But not this one. Actually, this one's the there. reason. This one is the reason that podcasts have negative stigmas. <laughs> we are the we are the we are the origin of negative connotations to podcasts. All right, real quick, make sure first of all you follow us on IG and TikTok at Morning Commute Pod. Subscribe to us on YouTube at Super Villain Studios. And give, give us give us a follow, bro. Our, our IGs will, will be down below. Check out all our other content and all that all that good stuff. But fellas, I for one am somebody who suffered from insomnia. So the other night, I was turned to like the channels and shit, right? And I found uh I came across Disney Disney Channel, right? So, and I haven't watched Disney in a minute, and it was Lemonade Mouth. Oh. The movie that I haven't seen Woo! in a long, long time called well, Fire Movie. Fire Woo! Movie, Fire Soundtrack. But it reminded me of all those nights that I couldn't sleep, that I would turn on Disney and it would be those home movies, bro. So I want to ask y'all, what's y'all favorite Disney TV movie? The DCOMs. The DCOMs. Disney Channel original movie. Oh, I was about to say, I was like, oh, hey, I was like is that a movie? <laughs> Okay, they yeah. always called them that the DCOMs. Did I thought they were Disney originals? Yeah, no. that's how that's how I remember Disney Channel original movies. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. If you know, you know. <laughs> okay. You 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 said it, my brother. Lemonade Mouth is at the top of my list. Like that's that's a 10 out of 10 movie for me. First of all, I used to remember well, we all remember when like throughout the week, there was like you know, catch the the new movie eight p.m. What was it? Eight p.m. Uh, seven Central. Seven, yeah, Seven Central. And I'm like, yo, gotta get ready. I used to be talking to people in school, like, yo, I'm about to watch this movie release tonight at the at, at the, the couch and the TV. But yep. Lemonade Mouth is definitely at the top of my list. I'd be arguing my girlfriend down because she'd be like, it's ass, and I'm like, it's not ass. Come on now. And then she has another opinion about another movie, but I'm gonna let Vaughn go first before I talk about that one because that's also on my list. Cool. The greatest Disney Channel movie ever created. Let it shine. Okay, you on there? See, you read, you read uh, my mind. You read uh, my mind. Uh, I don't know about that one, man. Don't, what? Don't do, it. don't do it, brother. I don't know about You're that. Fifty percent black is 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 about to be taken hey, away. Look, 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 look. I get it. All right, I get it. It's a fun movie. The raps are bad, bro. They're You're lying. Bad. First of all, bad. it's crazy. It's not- it's not just about a fun movie. All right. First of all, a black cast. Second yes. of all, yeah, I get it. 
the raps and the the songs like some of the songs go hard don't run away from the truth that one goes hard let it shine when they in the church at the end and they go front up and we packed this up and clapping live and singing dancing this little light of mine i actually then hated that the, one the actual rap battle i was watching it the other day was actually so fire i might be a bus boy but you just got served <laughs> That's so, uh, you know what, bro? It's probably because the age that I watched that movie that I, I guess I wasn't young enough, bro. But, like, it just, like, the, the satisfying moment at the end just didn't hit for me, bro. He's just like, yeah, I saw you driving in a taxi cab. I'm like, turn this shit off. <laughs> bro. And it was just a great cast. Freaking oh, great cast. Co- Coco Jones. You got uh, Tyler James Williams, a.k.a. Everybody Hates Chris. You got the dude with the ponytail from Grown Ish. Trevor, so ja- Trevor Jackson's Hallie and Chloe and Hallie. Yes. Courtney P. Vance. Stop playing. Yeah. Like I will give you that. It was, yeah, it was okay. a good cast. It was a great yeah, bro. Bro, um, that played um the, the one with the hat. He was also random and, and sunny with a chance. He's amazing. Oh, Brendan Michael Smith. Yeah, he's amazing. I've always thought he was funny. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll give you that. It was a great cast, but I'm gonna give you another movie that's also black. Don't throw no also no, a great no, cast. Either. That's a better movie than that. I'm going to jump in. Kiki Palmer and Corbin Blue. Corbin Blue, the one with the where the dude who has a first of all, the plot pisses me off a little bit. The fact that he had a very successful boxing career ahead of him, but he chose to jump rope instead. A little annoying, but good movie. W cast, good storyline. It's the dad from Roll Bounce, I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Nah, but yeah, that was a good movie. And another one. Wait, wait, wait. Before you share the other one, let me ask you a question about Jump In. Justice or Chap, do you like High School Musical? The third one. That's it. Because High School uh, Musical is just the white Jump In. Low key, yeah. Because like you said, Corbin Blue had a chance at boxing and, and wow. Zac Efron was, well, he was a basketball player. Yeah. But then he chose singing and then the, Corbin Blue chose Jump Rope. Yeah, I pretty much. About that. I like that girl. Musical. I'm not like a big musical guy in general, but yeah, that one was cool. An- another big one for me. It's not a musical, but uh, Wendy Wu, Homecoming Warrior. I've never watched Wendy Wu. That's and I love Brenda's song. That's Brenda's song, right? Yeah, yeah. I I love Brenda's song, but I just never watched that movie. I thought I th- Loki thought it was racist, and I was like, of course they they it got Brenda's is, song with Wendy Wu. Wendy is, Wu. It probably is a little bit racist, but it was good though. I remember it being a good movie. All right, I'm let me throw it back list. a little bit. Let me Whoa. throw it back a little bit. No more, please. More? I said no more. I said no more. Because you've already had some. <laughs> no, because you forced us with the picture on it's Instagram. Right. Let me throw right. it back a little bit. I have a I have a Disney uh I have a Disney Channel original movie old, old, old school selection. Have y'all seen The Luck of the Irish? Oh my god, bro. I have no clue what that is. Banger. The Luck of the Irish is one of the best Disney Channel original movies. It's I'm an old, it old movie. It's, it's about great. this kid and his fa- he finds out that him and his family are leprechauns. And it's yep. so good, bro. And this dude, Ryan Merriman, he played like in so many Disney Channel movies growing yeah, up. Yeah, I've seen him before. He was also in one of the Final Destinations, too. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. You're right. I'll throw but another one out there. That. This dude was also in Smart House, one of the oldest Disney Channel original Banger. movies that was... Banger. Wait, what year was this? Luck of the Irish was like 01. See, I didn't get to Disney Channel till like 07. No, but bro, these there. were on repeat. Like, they had these on every night at 7, 8 o'clock. I did they not were. get to See, Vaughn, you're taking it back, so you might know what I'm talking about here, right? The, 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 these are two... They're deep cuts, right? So this one, it was called Up, Up, and Away, right? It was like a fake sky high, but it was a black family. It was basically a black family of superheroes, and then the kid didn't get his powers yet, and he ended up getting powers like at the end. Nah, neither of y'all have seen this? I've never it's, seen this no. one, no. It's an obscure one for sure. Definitely one of, one of my favorites, but one that I hated was The Color of Friendship. Why do you hate the color of friendship? Bro, what is that? I don't know what it was, bro. It was just like, it was so boring to me. I know the lessons they were trying to like, but like, bro, like it's three o'clock in the morning, bro. I'm trying to laugh, bro. I'm not trying to hear about racial oppression and shit like that, bro. <laughs> like, I'm a young kid. Like, what, what, I might as well go watch Roots. Like, damn, this is <laughs> a Disney channel. 
That's the point. You're supposed to learn about it. I don't want to learn at 3 a.m., bro. <laughs> 3 a.m. is not the time to be like, I got to wake up at school tomorrow. Have you guys seen, you might be a little too old for this, Starstruck? I know what it is. I've, I've seen bits and pieces, but never watched it full through. But I like the Loki is a decent movie. It's a good one, but I the little the girl in the movie, she's just so dramatic. It's just like she she she's a normal girl and she runs into a celebrity. And the whole movie, it's like, you know, she's trying to learn what it's like to be with him. He's trying to learn what it's kind of like to be normal. And they kind of start falling for each other. But she is so bipolar. Like one minute in the film, she's like, So are you gonna hold the door open for me? And then the next minute, she's just like, like she's cool with him, and that's just it's, that's just one thing that pisses me off about that movie. Just yeah. so back and forth. We're not saying these are the greatest, you know, pieces of cinema ever, but some of these, some of these are good for sure. Like, um, like have y'all seen like Minute Men? That's a yeah. Good, uh, I watched Minute Men for the first time a couple of months ago. It was okay. This is I must be so behind on all these movies. I'm telling you, I've never heard of many of these actually. That, that's a newer one too. I'm surprised you haven't seen that one. Let's talk about. Like the Disney Channel movies that are that have that are series, right? Of course, we got Camp Rock. I wasn't a fan. Me neither. No. Okay. Let's. What about we talked about High School Musical? What about Xenon? Nah, you lost. What's Xenon? Y'all haven't seen Xenon? All right, that's old. What about uh, the Cheetah Girls? Oh yeah, I know the Cheetah Girls only because my girlfriend, but I know the Cheetah Girls. Girls. Cheetah Girls were gas for sure. I've never seen Cheetah Girls. Really? Gotcha. It low key reminds me, uh, well, y'all probably haven't watched this, but Bratz, I've only watched that because my girlfriend, but it's it's almost like that. Yeah, I didn't watch, I know what it was though. Um, speaking of series, I know it's Halloween. Did, did y'all fuck with a uh, Halloween Town? Yeah, I've never watched Halloween Town, bro. What's it's, wrong always, with you? it's always on my list for Halloween, I just yeah. never get around to it. You know, I've seen Halloween Town, I, I'm not the biggest fan to be honest. I like Twitches better. And maybe because they were black, maybe because they were black, that's probably the bias in me. But pretty much, yeah, that's pretty much what it is. But yeah, I, I like Twitches, but I, I thought the storylines were dope too. If we staying on the the path of special editions, um, good luck, Charlie Christmas, definitely at the top of my list. Oh, like the show, the movies that got that were shows. Yeah, Charlie is Christmas is a pretty good movie. The plot's a little strange to me. The one thing I will say about the Good Luck Charlie movie that beats any Disney Channel show turn movie is that the movie continues in the show. Yeah, that's tough. Because uh, and what what I mean by that is like Disney in, in the Good Luck Charlie movie, the mom announces she's pregnant, and then the next season of the show, they could she's still pregnant. Whereas Wizards of Waverly Place movie, which happened in the mid like in between seasons two and three. Those are good too. They have, they have the wizard competition in the movie, and then when they get back to the show, it's like that never happened ever. Yeah, yeah, and that makes no sense to me. They and they do that like the Sweet Life movie, which was also ass. That it's yeah, like, that was so ass. It's like that. It, yeah, that was just probably just for money. Like they were trying to milk the 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 Sprouse brothers while they still had them. But that storyline doesn't exist in the show after the fact. It's just so stupid to me. That's why I think. Um, yeah, I think the Good Luck Charlie movie is one of the best TV shows turned movies. I don't know if this counts as a movie, but when they did the Hannah Montana Sweet Life, that's all Raven crossover shit. Oh shit! Oh, you talk that, about Wizards no. on Deck with Hannah Montana, bro. That was like watching the Super Bowl when we were younger, bro. We we're like, <laughs> yo, we I gotta tap in to see this shit, bro. For real. That's another one though. When they did the Hannah Montana movie, she revealed that she was my uh, that Miley was Hannah, and then they never they didn't they yeah. went back to the that's season three like that didn't happen. It was just for the moment. It was just right. For, right. This is this remi- that reminds me of uh, it's not Disney, but uh, Nickelodeon when they did the Fairly Odd Parents Jimmy Neutron. That was oh that was shoot. Cool. That was I, I didn't really like it like that actually. What? Yeah, no. I, did, I, I I might be the only one, but I didn't. I was not a big fan. That was gas right there, bro. Not a big fan at all. That was gas. All right. It's time to bring back a classic. First of all, thank you for staying on. Um, if you're still listening, we're about to bring back Pick Your Poison. Vaughn, can you tell her what Pick Your Poison is? Sure thing, Chapito. Pick Your Poison is like an extreme version of Would You Rather. We give you two options. You must choose ye this day on which one you shall do. Chap, what's today's Pick Your Poison? All right, I wanted to stay in the Halloween season, so I wanted to 
make it a little spooky. But um, it's pick your poison says be lost in the woods with the serial killer or be locked in a haunted, insane asylum. Say it one uh, more time I, for the people in the back. I got you. Be lost in the woods with a serial killer or be locked in a haunted, insane asylum. Both Let's of these are already this. scary. I am not a horror movie guy at all. I hate even watching horror movies. So myself being in a scenario, like a real life scenario of these, I'm already like petrified. <laughs> um, Lost in the woods. I, I think I'm going to go in an insane asylum only because there's a chance I will make it out if I don't get caught. By... Haunted insane asylum. I don't believe in hauntings. You don't believe? Okay, brother. I don't believe in things that are haunted. I don't believe in uh, like psychics and mediums and that stuff. Okay. Hey, I ain't gonna argue now. All I'm saying is I'm on the other end. I believe in it. So you said a haunted insane asylum or or be lost in the woods with the serial killer. I think I'd choose the woods. I think I'd choose the woods. I think I would hide. I'd find a good hiding place for the night. And then once daylight hits, I'm booking it. You're and dead. Nah, <laughs> I'll be all right. I'll be all right somehow. I mean, look, that, that's better odds than escape. escaping. It. It's it's an asylum. How are you going to get out? Yeah. It's meant for you not to get out. And if they catch you, they're going to they gonna think you're crazy. And they're going to they're gonna put you in there. <laughs> you're cooked. Not, no, bro. I'm, I'm I, with justice on this one. Honestly, Go ahead, you bring Bob. up a good point. I don't know why I thought this was just like an overnight type thing in my <laughs> head. It's just for like 24 hours. If it's that, then yeah, probably the asylum, but not even actually. I'm I'm still in the woods with it. It's yeah. a, I feel like it's a better chance of you getting away. And the, first of all, a woods is a, a fat ass piece of land. There's so much area that you can go to. It doesn't doesn't mean like you're near to serial killer. Like this, there's so much chance you can leave, you can hide, you can find somewhere safe. If you're in a, a insane asylum, like you said, you're locked in. There's nowhere to go. You just gotta you know, so thug it out for 24 hours. I'm yeah. escaping. I don't know how crazy the crazies are, but I feel like the doctors or the security in the asylum would see how normal I am, how not crazy I am. <laughs> And they'd be like, okay, we'll let you out, buddy. But I'd still have to be there for a little bit. I'd have to get through it. Like, I would say, like, a night. I'm going to be honest with you. They're probably going to think you're crazy. It's the ones that don't seem crazy that are the crazy. <laughs> <laughs> they open up the door, and then you just start going crazy. Like You're going to be spending the entire time trying to convince them that you're not crazy. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 whatever. And you're going to be there forever. <laughs> that ass. And so you're eventually going to turn crazy. Just <laughs> being there that long. I'm choosing the insane asylum, bro. And like I said, I don't believe in hauntings. Chap, why do you? I just I feel like there's a lot of it's in, uh supernatural things, sinister things that we know in this world. If there's good, there has to be some type of evil. It's it's always a balance. Um, so it's just we don't know about it too much. I don't really want to know about it, but this is definitely entities in this world um that I don't want to come in contact with, but they are a thing, you know. Yeah, if, if it's just a regular serial killer, I'm taking the woods. If it's like, you know, Michael Myers or something, then, you know, that's different. Cause, you know, those dudes, they got powers and shit, bro. For real, for real. I don't know. I'm a big Michael Myers fan. I, I got the, the pop figure in the back. Yeah, you, um, if, he, if, he, if he wants to catch you, you're done. Yeah, I mean, Michael, people be saying Michael be teleporting, but Michael just, he's just smart, man. I'm telling you, he know where you be. He be teleporting, bro. Well, All let right, us... Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I, exactly I was going to just going to re repeat the the pick your poison for our listeners: be lost in the woods with a serial killer, or locked up in the haunted in the same insane asylum. You got you about to have the straight jacket on, and like how you, how you about to how you about to go? Like first of all, that, that, that shit just gives me anxiety. They're gonna put a straight jacket on me in an asylum. Yeah, I feel like they would just put me in the shoe, like they, in a they, with the straight show. jacket. That's so crazy. I don't know Is what that, happens in asylums. There's well, an asylum in my hometown in Trenton, New Jersey, Trenton Psych Ward. It's not far from my dad's house at all. Really? Damn. No, I should visit. <laughs> you should. You met yourself. Can I ask y'all a question? What no. is uh the weirdest field trip you've ever been on? Weirdest? My girlfriend Alyssa told me that when she was in sixth grade, they took her to an active prison. 
And I was just like, what? What? At was, 11 or 12 years old. This is Beyond Scared Straight. <laughs> And that's that's what I don't even think it was on some beyond scared straight like don't don't be bad in school or don't drop out or this will happen. I just think it was just like a here this is a field trip for the day type thing. Like there was no intention of like don't end up here. Nah, that's insane, bro. The teachers must have hated them. That's like <laughs> teachers must have hated them. Who said let's get on a bus, let's drive these kids down to the prison, and let's have a field trip. That makes no sense. That is crazy. I'm, and I'm I think, think. Uh, I just, I mean, if you don't have one, it's fine. I was just thinking like going to an asylum would also be a crazy field trip, especially for somebody as young as I got an 11th. How old are you in, in sixth grade? Like 11, 12 years old? Yeah. Yeah, I think you're 11. Jeez. That is, that is nasty. I can't think of the craziest. I haven't really been on any like crazy field trips or nothing like that. You got, you got any chat? I'm I'm thinking first of all, I don't know if I'm just we just old as hell or something, but I'm just blanking right now. Like yeah. Yeah, okay. like let me ask you a different question then, since we're keeping on this whole spooky theme. An irrational fear that you have. Because I I I have one, and both of you know it, but I was I'll say it again. But I was also talking to I think a listener texted or something this week and told me theirs, and it was just the funniest thing in the world. So they told me their irrational fear was spoons. Spoon and I just yes, like uh the eating utensil a spoon. This is a real thing. And I looked it up. Soup. Apparently, this is a common thing to be scared of spoons. I don't know how you eat soup. Maybe you just you with the fork, you just twist the noodles on it, and then you just have to drink the the liquid like it's cereal, like it's milk from cereal. I don't know, but they said they cannot do spoons. You're looking at you like a dog. I'm sorry. And they're like, come on. Up. That was crazy. <laughs> um, yeah, that that's pretty irrational. I'm not gonna lie. Sp spoons are not scary whatsoever. Uh, I've never been scared of a spoon. Uh, Laughing is crazy. <laughs> nah, I can't lie. That's crazy. They are petrified of these spoons, and you say they're laughing, bro. Have you, you ever seen the? the you never seen you never seen the episode of Jerry Springer when they had the cotton balls? That's Maury. That's Maury. Oh, That's Maury. Oh, Maury. <laughs> and the person just like jetting it. Nah, Yo. This there's another one where uh, she was scared of pickles and he was like, bring out the pickles and they brought out this jar of pickles, bro. And she started running and they followed her with the pickles. That shit was crazy. Maury Povich is a menace. Yo, nah, that ass. Nice. Nah, that my was irrational crazy. fear is that my kids are going to be ugly. This is a genuine fear of mine and people laugh at me for it, but it, and I don't think it has anything to do with me being ugly or my girlfriend Alyssa, who I will eventually have kids with. I don't, she she is not, she's the most beautiful human on this planet, inside and out. But I just don't think that I've seen some ugly uh, kids with beautiful parents. So I'm worried that the odds might not be in my favor. You better pray. <laughs> Get some crystals or something. <laughs> yeah, man. Look, just honestly, I think at this point you might have spoken into existence since you said it so much. <laughs> So I would I would calm down with that because it might actually happen. You, you, you go that baby gonna pop out. You gonna see a unibrow. You gonna be you gonna be pissed off. A baby uh, born with a unibrow would be nasty work. It would be nasty where you'd be like, damn. Wait, <laughs> you know, so, is, is she beautiful? You'd be like, uh, uh I, I would be like, it's a she. <laughs> <laughs> I I can't imagine. I don't know if y'all ever seen um the movie Benjamin Button, and yeah. like when they look at the baby, he's like, what? <laughs> And they just like leaves it off in somebody's house. I feel like that's gonna be fine. Facts, not facts, bro. Uh, I mean, What's I your irrational fear. I have, I have one fear. I don't think it's irrational to be honest. I'm afraid of the ocean, bro. The, the ocean is scary. The ocean it's, is very scary. I, I feel like that's not irrational. That's really the only fear I have. I guess besides going broke. But when I was a kid, my biggest fear was getting kidnapped. And I guess I want to tell this funny story, bro. I feel like I was you got like, kidnapped. No, no, I didn't get kidnapped. Oh, all right, all right. But I was like 12 years old, bro. And like, I feel like this, I think this person like ran in the driveway or some shit. And I ran in the house and I was like, oh my God, I almost got kidnapped. And my dad looked at me, he was like, nigga, you are too big to get kidnapped. And after that, <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, I guess you're right. I am kind of big. And I just, I just stopped being scared after that. <laughs> it was just funny. He was like, nigga, you gonna get kidnapped? You? And I was like, yeah, I guess you're right. That would take right. a effort. It'd be your own peoples, I'm telling you. Your I, own it, it's real though. And I needed that. I needed <laughs> I needed I was after that day, I was good, bro. Chap, 
before you share yours, let me read a couple that I found on Reddit. These are actual yeah. irrational fears that people have had. Oh, boy. Uh, somebody said, I'm afraid of pasta salad. They said, okay. every time I'm about to take a bite of hot pasta, there's a moment of sheer panic where I expect it to be icy, cold, and disgusting. Okay. Another one. These are irrational fears. Getting stabbed in the armpit. Somebody said, I know this is a weird one, but stick with me. If someone sta uh, stabs you in the armpit, it could take your whole arm off with relatively little effort. I mean, even if they just use a spoon or something, hope you don't like having your arms attached. What? Okay. I wonder where some of these irrational fears like stem from, right? Here's another one. Uh, uh, old people. Uh, whenever my kid and I would be at dinner and he'd see old people around me, he'd whisper and be like, Mom, we gotta get out of here. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't see grandma. No. Right. That's what I want to know. His buddy is old, bro. Chat, what's your rational fear, bro? Mine is I feel like this is very kiddish, but space. I'm scared of space. I don't I don't think I can ever take the like Honestly, if I'm ever presented with the opportunity, I want to muster up another enough courage to go to space and be in a, a spacecraft. But I don't think I can do it. Like, just the idea of space scares me. I don't feel like that's irrational. Yeah, I feel like that's really? similar to the ocean. It's similar to the ocean, except yeah. like it's a little different because obviously we're not going to space. You know, the ocean that you know that that's accessible. You know, tsunamis, you never know. But yeah, space is scary, bro. Uh, we don't know what's up there, bro. More Reddit thread of rational fears. I have a fear of balloons. Nine times out of ten, when I tell people this, they find a balloon and squeeze it and pop it right in front of me to see if I actually have the phobia. That's I just want to know what trauma people go through to have some of these irrational fears. It, it's it's definitely like some childhood shit. It gotta be. Yeah, it definitely stems from that. Mm, let me see. I'm reading through some more of these. This one's not as irrational. Somebody said anytime they go in the bathroom to pee, even if they're in like a, a public bathroom, they're scared that the shower curtain or the stall that the stall door that might be closed that somebody's in there waiting to kill them. Okay, happy death day. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. I'm scared that a bug is gonna crawl into my hair dryer, and when I go to turn it on, it's gonna shoot the bug into my hair. I mean, okay. That, that I don't think they should be worried about that. They should be worried about spiders crawling in your mouth when you sleep. Cause that happens to everybody. What, or, wait, what? Oh yeah, I've heard that before. Okay, I, I've I also heard. That. I've heard, or not? I've heard. I used to be scared. Kind of still like I don't like hair. I used to hate when I would get in the shower and my mom or my grandma or my sister would have little like little things of hair. Even like right. my girlfriend Alyssa when she gets in the shower, I like try to kick it away with my foot. Yes, I hate it, and I would like not get anywhere near that corner of the tub. <laughs> oh my god! No, I I, I totally under first of all, I don't know how you survive being in a dorm room then, because I feel like the dorm room like little hairs on that the, the floor used to like. Oh my gosh, ooh, just that's gross. Nasty. I, I would I would even take it a step farther and say anything wet. Like I don't I hate walking in New York when it rains. Like that is like the most gross that's, thing ever. It is. It is. It definitely. New York is gross in general, but nah, you're definitely right. It's like try like wet trash. Like you're yeah. walking on wet trash and everything's soggy and it just looks nasty. It didn't like some of the water just be brown or, or like yellow. Like nobody wanna see that. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Damn fellas, episode seven is over already. Damn, damn, damn. Already? Yeah, bro. Already? Like, and justice is gone next week. Cause you're going, where are you going, bro? I'm going to LA for a week. Nice vacation. But what's in LA? Oh, he know what's in LA. Who's in LA? He know what's in LA. Dude, LA is just good vibes, man. Uh good food, good eats out there. Um, for all my weed smokers, good weed out there. Um question. Did it start getting chilly in in Jersey yet? Hell yeah. Oh it's my weird. god. Oh, so that's, that's part of why you're going away. Well, partly over there, it's it's still like in like the seventies, just a little warmer. Mm. So, but the air is different out there, bro. Honestly, but yeah, I'm just gonna chill, relax. I think we're gonna go to like Disney for one day. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Let's see how many uh, Disney adults I encounter. You know, who I'm talking about, the people who freaking got got the, the the Mickey Mouse ears on. People who go to Disney every week. <laughs> those, those freaks.
I better not see you on somebody's story in the strip club with the hookah in your hand. That's all I gotta say. I'm gonna flame you when you get back here. <laughs> bro, I just, bro, you. you see me with hookah, bro. I give you permission to screenshot that shit. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. What's what's wrong with hookah? What's not wrong with hookah? Bro, we've done hookah together, all three of us. No, I did part bro, of you've never seen a hookah, a hookah pipe in my hand. I do not you, do that. You didn't stuff. smoke that hookah with me that one at my graduation party. No, bro. No. Only only nasty niggas like you. See, he looks right after that. Was I did look at my lips. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I, I don't even fuck with hookah like that. My girlfriend Alyssa is a is a hookah head, and she put me onto it. And She's, I'm not, again. I'm not even onto it. I literally just do it when we're right. at a hookah lounge or whatever. It's because she's Hispanic. I would only smoke hookah if I'm with a Latina. So if you do see me out in Cali smoking hookah, just know there's some Latinas nearby. That's the only reason I'm picking up a hookah, a hookah pipe for sure. I don't. It's, it's a it's a pen. No, you keep saying pipe. I think it's a hookah pen. No, it's a it's a pipe. Yeah. Oh, okay. See, I'm not I'm not down with the hookah language. I love but that. We took a week off last week. Next week, justice will be gone. But you can tap in still. Chappie and I will be here. Maybe we'll have a special guest. Ooh. Mmm. That'd be cool. We'll see. Maybe you might. We're gonna J- chap. When are we gonna tell him he's gonna get replaced by a white woman? Uh, yeah. let's give him a few days. I knew this was coming. We we doing auditions. I knew this was coming, bro. <laughs> Auditions. <laughs> <laughs> you can sign up at <laughs> right. The link's in the down bar below. The link, <laughs> if you're a white girl and want to be on this show, is supervillainstudios.com. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> no, it's calm. Yeah. It's calm. Not it, is, it is calm. <laughs> <laughs> for what we're soliciting for is dot com. <laughs> Anything else we don't we we don't uh we we're, we're not promoting that. Mm-hmm. You can find me on Instagram at Vont League V O N T L E A K, and you can hear me every Monday through Friday on the Day Ryan Show on KDWB on the free iHeart Radio app. You can follow me at Justin Chap J U S T Y N C H A P. Let me know what you're doing. Follow me. I follow you back. And you can follow me on IG underscore Injustice. Subscribe to Super Villain Studios on YouTube. Um, also tap into my other podcast, the super villain show and the no look podcast for all my hoop fans. And, uh, yeah, www.supervillainstudios.net. And man, uh, like we mentioned earlier and I, this is maybe, I've been trying to find a way to end this show better. And I want to end it on this positive note. Like chap said earlier, check on your friends, check on your loved ones, your friend, your friends, your family. Literally how you're doing. Just say that. I, I, Me, Jap, and Justice make it a goal to say that. Even before we, like, cut the mics on. Yeah. You know, I just, because I want to know how my brothers are doing. I want to make sure they're right mentally. Um, Even when we and, don't mean it. Justice doesn't mean it. Chap and I are actually <laughs> sincere, sincere good people. I joke, I kid. Yeah. Well, yeah, some days. Yeah. Anyway. Thank you for listening. We're back next week. Uh, follow us all on Instagram at Morning Commute Pod and TikTok for clips of the show, highlights, um, and we'll be back next Friday. I don't know why I said Friday. Next Monday. Thank you so much for listening. Peace. <laughs>